Hi guys, it's Becky, and today is the very last day of September, and this is going to be the very last of my September chain challenge necklaces that I make. Um, if you haven't been here yet, for the entire month of September, I have been making two beaded chain necklaces a week for the whole month, and this is the very last day for it, so this is the very last project for it, and I am really happy with the amount of um, creativity that challenging myself to this has brought to me and to my projects and um, it's just given me an opportunity to work more on some of my skills like my wire wrapping skills and things like that um, and I'm really glad that for everyone who's chosen to join me with this and who's been beating along and having fun with it and expanding their creativity and doing something new that they maybe thought that they they weren't ready to do or just you know didn't have time to do, just taking a little bit of time to make some beaded chains and have some fun. So when I did my um, explanation video, one of the things that I mentioned was wanting to do some hammered copper, hammered washer um, links for this. And so I went ahead and hammered out some links. This is just a set of uh, copper washers. And I'll put a link to... Uh, this little pack of washers. I'll put a link to that where I bought it from. I got it from Amazon. I'll put that in my description. So if you want to grab some of these, you can. But it comes in all sorts of different sizes and shapes. Um, some of them have kind of a thinner wall, which will still work for hammering. Um, but I wanted uh, something that would show a little bit more of the texture. So I used some of these bigger ones. But I went ahead and grabbed out um, like two of each size to hammer except for the largest size and I got four of these and uh, this is the texture that I ended up with with that and this is the hammer that I used for it it's my ball peen hammer oh this I also got from Amazon I'll put a link to that too in my description for that um, but I wanted to show you uh, just use my little bench block that I've got here my ball peen hammer and um, pliers to hold it because you don't want to hold it with your fingers and you just tap it like that. That's all I did. I'm not going to do a full demonstration. Um, but I do want to show you because um, when I was talking about it, I was showing you some of my other, an another, or sorry, another texturizing hammer that I have um, that I wasn't sure which texture I'd be using, whether it was going to be this like square shaped, um, almost like a meat tenderizer side. I have not used this for meat and I probably won't use it for meat. Um, just letting you know, I don't think this is food grade. <laughs> and then this one that has kind of a pointier point to it, as opposed to the, the point on the, uh, the ball peen hammer, which is more of a round shape. And so these were my um, tester samples. And this was the texture that I got. Let's get a little closer so that it's more visible. This is the texture that I got using the meat tenderizer side of the of that hammer. And it's kind of cool, but it's not the look that I was going for. So I decided not to use that for this project. Um, this was with the pointier end side. You see, you get more like pitting and uh, uneven divots on it using this, that side. And that's this, this side. That's the texture that I got with that. And this is the one that I got with the ball peen hammer. And you get kind of like rounder, more organic looking um, hammer points in there and this was the texture that I wanted. So that's why I did that. I used it for the other links that I'm using. So now that we've talked about the hammer and how we got there, um, let's talk about what beads we're gonna be using because I've got my links that I have hammered out and I've got four of the largest size and then two of each of these following sizes. And so I'm going to be beating some links that go between each of these for my little chain. 
when I do that. And also, I've got these Tierra Cast toggle clasps. I know everybody's been stocking up on Tierra Cast and people are afraid to use them now because, oh, the, the company's shutting down. Like, when will you ever have them? But you know what? Use the good stuff. Use the good stuff because what's it, what use is it going to be sitting in your stash and not getting used? But see, this is uh, going to actually echo a little bit the, the hammer tone of the other bits. So I'm going to be using those for my closures. Um, I just brought some of these out because I'm not sure if I will be using them or not. But I've got this um, copper double Rolo chain. And then I've got these spacers that are textured that way. I might use them, I might not. I have not completely decided what my links are going to look like, but just in case I need them, I'm going to use them for my wire for making my links. I'm gonna use this non-tarnished copper soft flex because it is the same color as my links. And I love, love, love the look of bare copper. Well bright copper and this way I can do some wrapped loop links with this 22 gauge. I also have it in 20 and 18 gauge which um, if I was going to do simple loops I would probably use that gauge for this. I'm going to use those and from the beadbox bargains or bargain beadbox site um, I had gotten during one of their sales these kind of copper colored O beads and these are glass beads they're not metal spacers like these are so I haven't decided yet which of these if any I'm going to be using with my links but I got them out just in case I wanted to use them so they're going to be over here for that and as far as the beads and what I'm using I love 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 the look of turquoise with copper so I have had these copper beads, or sorry, these turquoise beads in my stash for a while. I can't even remember where I got them from, but I've got these like four millimeter rounds beads. They're like about the size of like a 6-0 seed bead, but they don't have the, uh, the cylindrical shape. They're rounder. For that, I've got some chip beads. And I've got these fantastic, and I'm gonna be using these on my focal. That's what these are going to be there for. They are these like spear shaped drops. I don't actually know if I would call it a spear or a feather or a point or a dagger, um, but they've got a hole on one end and I thought they'd be fantastic for this. Let me just see. Yeah, they are about three centimeters long, so that would be 30 millimeters on that. So I think I might have gotten these from uh, Fire Mountain Gems like a couple of years ago, but these are definitely going to be part of my focal um, when I go to make it. And for the rest of the turquoise beads, I'm just going to raid this howdy, howdy, howdy box from Jesse James Beads because there was a bunch of turquoise in here. And I had, when I opened it, this idea that I was going to be using some of these silver components and making a necklace with that. But again, I love, love, love the look of this bright copper with turquoise. So I'm going to pull these beads out of here and we are going to use them. And this is going to be part of my focal too. And we're going to use some of these beads um, to make links for, uh, let me grab a couple of these chips because I can add them to these chips. We're going to be making links for this, uh, for this project using the turquoise beads. Actually, I probably already have enough chips, don't I? All right. Now, let me move these guys out of the way and we'll get started on the focal. 
and then I will figure out what links I want to make and we'll make a couple of those on camera. And then I will make the rest of them and then we'll put them all together. Now you will want to stay around, stick around to the end of this video because at the end I'm going to pull out all of the necklaces that I made for this challenge and we'll just do a recap of everything. I think this is how I want this to go. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum. I'm just playing with my beads, laying them out, and I think that might be enough. Let's see. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven of them. Have a few more. Let me get out some wire and I'm just gonna pull off Let's see this is 15 inches about 16 inches of wire so I can kind of play around with it I'm just kind of making a U shape so that I can figure out where approximately this middle bit is going to be and I'm gonna start stringing these with these guys as separators yeah let's do those I was gonna use the O beads but I think I want to use these spacers and I got these from the beadbox bargains website too they were on sale you're having like a spacers sale. So let's get these alternatingly strung on here. I'm using my 22 gauge wire for this. Uh, let me pause real quick and just talk about. I'm using flush cutters. I have some six step bail making pliers. And I'm going to be using some uh, chain nose pliers. I've got some bent chain nose pliers here. You can use straight ones or tweezer nose pliers um, in order to manipulate the wire. You can use some round nose pliers. I'm going to be using these for consistency's sake in my loop. But I'll tell you how you can adapt this design when we get to it to use the round nose pliers. But I just want to do my wire wrapping with this. There we go. Yeah, I like the way that looks. We're just going to have a big old toothy focal right in the middle with these turquoise beads and this copper. I know I just kind of jump right into everything. Sorry about that, guys. Um, sometimes I just like to get into the, the making stuff. All right, now let me see if this is going to be long enough for what I want it to do, or if I'm going to need to add a few more. Okay, because what I want it to do is curve around the, the side of this, and I think this is going to be perfect for this, actually. So... Now that I've got these these middle bits here, I think that is the perfect size. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna bend this wire in that direction. And I'm gonna bend this wire in the opposite direction. Put my 
large turquoise bead through there. And this is going to be the fun part because I'm going to try to feed this going through my large turquoise bead going in the opposite direction. Perfect. Go around. And I want that bend part to be where it, it ends. Now, focal's not done. I need to make a couple of loops on either end for us to be able to attach couple of rings to. So I want my loop to be looping this way, not this way, so that my ring lays flat when I do this. So for this, it's going to be a wire wrapped loop. I'm going to bend over my guy right there. And I want to make sure that I have enough clearance with my loop for the, the entire ring. So I'm going to use the, if you count one, two, three, the third step down on my six step bell making pliers. If you're using your round nose pliers, you're going to want to move up the barrel near the end of that. So I'm going to be using this one to make my loop. So I made my bend. I'm going to place that here on this and I'm going to try not to deform everything that I've already done. Pull my guy all the way around. Before I wrap my loop, now that I've got this round part created here, before I wrap this loop, I'm going to squeeze this with my pliers. It's dead soft wire, so it is extremely malleable and easy to use, but if you want it to keep its shape a little bit, you're going to want to work hard on it with a couple of bloop bloop bloops to help it stay firm. And I'm going to slide my link on right there. Perfect. Now I'm going to try to do some wrapping with all of these dangly bits getting in the way. That's one. I think I might, yeah, I'm going to go back up and wrap it back up and make a fat wrap.
dangly bits. There we go. At the end, I thought about doing a couple of coils and having them lay on there, but I think I think I just want the the rings and wraps. I don't want to do coils and things. So that's going to be the start and I'm going to wrap the other side roughly the same way. Bend that over the top. Use my bail making pliers to make myself a loop. Watch it. Give my loop a squish. And get this hammered link connected. And start wrapping. It's not good wrapping because there's so much else going on. Also, I am not used to using the bent nose pliers. That's different for me. grab them because they were handy. Usually I use the straight uh, chain nose pliers or I really like tweezer nose pliers. I think they're great. We're just gonna have a nice messy messy wrap on this side. That's fine. think which end of the side is the back I actually kind of think it goes a little bit Kind of looks like a little guy with little eyes and a big nose and a toothy grin. Love that. Love that for me. Okay, focal is done. Next, let's work out our links. Uh, where's? I don't know if I'm going to be using the nuggets or not, but I brought them out just in case. I think my next link is going to be these rounder guys. They're going to be between these larger hammered links and that. And 
I think for these ones I am going to use these O beads as spacers. We're just going to make some wrapped loop links. So I'm going to cut off about four inches, give or take, and maybe five. Ten centimeters is four inches. That's why I'm using my little measurer there. About five inches. Let's go ahead and about two inches down. I'm gonna make myself a bend. And again, I want to make sure that I give myself enough room for this to rotate. So the second loop on here is not going to be enough room. So I'm going to go for this third loop. And I'm going to give this a squish on this round part. I'm going to attach this link to it. Actually, no, let's attach it to this. Because then we can just build off of it from there. I think I'm going to build up one side of my necklace on camera, and then I'll build up the other side um, off camera so you don't have to watch me do the same links over and over again. There we go. Let's close that. Let's start wrapping. Let's see, I'm not used to the bent nose pliers. It's weird. It's weird. But I'm trying to get used to it. I'm trying to make sure I can become familiar with all of my tools. Because it's the only way that you know what you prefer and what you don't. I know tons of people prefer these because they kind of stay out of the way while you're doing things like wrapping. I'm going to go ahead and stick two of these O-rings on here. One of my flat coin shaped turquoise beads and then two of these O-rings on the other side. like that. And we're going to bend the wire in the same direction as this is bent and as it's going around so that we have some consistency. And I'm going to use the same loop, this third step down. And if you're using your other pliers, you're going to want to go pretty close to the, the middle of there to make your loop. And go all the way around. I'm going to give the round part of this a squish. And we're going to attach our next hammered ring. Just gonna wrap all the way down until I can't. Be 
sure my loops are facing the same direction. This is going to be very statementy, I think. So now I have my next link in place. I love this already. I love everything about this. All right, so the next link is going to be this next size down because we had these coin beads. Then we had sort of these uh, 10 millimeter beads. These ones are eight millimeter and they have some faceting to them. These ones are completely round, these 10 millimeter ones. So I'm gonna do the 10 millimeter one next, right there. And it's going to be connecting this largest size link with the next largest size. And I'm gonna go ahead because I like the way it looks with these O-rings on my links. I'm gonna do the next one with that too. Um, it kind of mimics this messy wrap that I made on the focal. And it also mimics the uh, the spacers that I was using here. So two of those O-beads look great with this. Right, so next one is going to be yeah yeah that's what I'm going to do I'm going to keep making these links and then I'm going to get these small ones off of the the chain and we'll uh we'll do some of those as we go to connect some of these smaller links yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. So I'm just going to do two, two O-rings, one turquoise bead, and two O-rings when I'm making my links. So let's make one more on camera. About two inches down. Make myself a little bend. Use my third loop, my six-step bail making pliers. to make myself a little circle. I'm gonna squish my circle so it stays circly. Then I'm gonna take my loop and I'm going to attach it to my existing necklace. I'm gonna build my necklace out this way. that loop up and then we're gonna wrap oh actually this is nice I think I like holding it this way told you I'm not used to using the, the bent chain nose pliers so I'm trying to get used to working with them and probably by the end of this project I will be much more used to working with them just too bad you guys have to watch me fooling around with it for a while but maybe that's good maybe it's good to see people trying to get used to working with something they're not familiar with because then you can be like well I am so much better than her <laughs> a good morale boost for you go so now I've got that yeah I'm actually like super duper loving the look of both of these O beads on each end it it goes really well with that and yep 
so. Smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. I just want it to stay circly. Open it up a little bit. Put my next ring on. I'm putting these over here on the side because they're going to be the uh, the other side once we get that done. Let's close that. Nice little link there. All right, so you guys can see how this is going to go. I'm going to go ahead and make my links using these other beads basically the same way. We'll make a loop, attach it to the next link in the, or the, the last link in the, the chain. Put on our two O beads, one turquoise bead and two O beads. Then we'll attach the next copper link and, um, and wrap that. So I'm going to keep making this all the way until I am done and I've used up all of my my copper links and uh, and then I will also do the exact same links on the other side so that we have a necklace that goes all the way All the way on both sides. I just, I love this. This is exactly what I wanted it to look like. That's amazing when that happens. And oh my gosh, guys. You notice any difference between this side of my, and this side? I forgot. I forgot my spacer on that side. I'm going to have to take this part and do it all over again. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> but you don't have to watch me do that. Um, that is the nice thing about making these links. All right. That's fine. I can maybe make the, the chain without this being attached. And it might actually make it a little bit easier for me without this swinging around being on it that whole time. So I'm going to... I'm going to redo my thing so that I can include this on the other side. <laughs> anyway, I will meet you back here after I make all of my links chains and after I've redone my focal because I love this, but I screwed something up and so I need to fix it. So <laughs> I'll see you in a minute or like an hour or two. I don't know. Okay, we are back and I have finished making all of my links and as I made them, I connected them to my hammered rings that were washers not too long ago. And I just made, I just, biggest link, biggest bead, next biggest link, next biggest bead, all the way down until I got to the end where I had my tiny, tiny little links and my smaller turquoise beads for these and I used the same method the same uh ring on my mandrel uh or my bail making pliers and I just did the two uh o-rings 
a turquoise bead and then two o-rings and it's the same and echoed for each of these just for consistency's sake to get us all the way along the end and you can see with my focal I did remake this I made it the exact same way I did before except I remembered to actually include these spacers on the side so that it would <laughs> it would give it that that right spacing on that so it has been remade and it was actually a lot easier to make it the second time when I wasn't trying to explain what I was doing to folks <laughs> as it is and so now all we have to do now is connect our closures in order to finish this up and like I said before I'm using these tiara cast closures that have the hammered look to them and let me grab some jump rings because I want to use jump rings to connect these on this last link I went ahead and closed the link and wrapped it up on the end and I want to use jump rings so that I have um, the extra um, movement, extra articulation for moving the, uh, the toggle into and out of the clasp when I am opening and closing it. So we've got some jump rings. And I'm really, really happy with these jump rings. Like I got them not too long ago and they've come in like all these different colors and lots and lots of different sizes and these are like I think one of my favorite go-to's now I'm definitely going to be getting more um when I do that, I'll put a link to this in my description too but let me get uh let me get these open I also have become a lot better with these and with wrapping around them I found my sweet spot for wrapping um, which was what I was hoping would do by making myself use a tool that I wasn't that familiar with. I found my sweet spot. I found the part where it would work for me. Right. I'm just opening and closing jump rings using my pliers. one and let's do the next one and then the exciting part is show and tell with all of my completed projects and I hope I put them in the right order we'll find out I did um, make a playlist with all of my necklaces that I made for this challenge um, and I will put the, that in the description if you want to see any of the other necklaces, the tutorials for those, or the videos that I made those with. Why am I so bad at this? Probably because I forgot to eat lunch. I'm going to finish this video and then I'm going to go have lunch. Because <laughs> then I can eat while this is editing. Alright, let's get that. I often forget to eat. My son is often the one who reminds me. Yep. Go in there. Maybe I have too much articulation. There we go. Toggle clasped. I love this project. I am so happy with it. Um, when I first said I wanted to do the hammered links I had no idea that I'd be using the turquoise I just made that decision this morning that this is what I was going to make and it still kind of looks like a face and I'm super okay with that because you know I like, I like seeing cute little guys everywhere I look but I I love this I love the copper and the turquoise together it's one of my favorite 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 looks i'm just gonna check my length oh that's beautiful this is definitely a look at me focal it's a statement necklace and i'm so so happy with it so this is make number 10. this is the 10th so let's go look at the first one actually let's uh let's pick this up and move it and this is one of the reasons why I love this um, bead mat and it comes in this board 
um, when I went to go make the rest of these links, I just picked this up and took it with me and set it on my lap while I was watching TV and uh, put the this together. And um, yeah, I, I like it because you can just pick it up, move it, and it, uh, it works out really well for that. So let me get this out of the way. Pick this up. Do we want the black background? Maybe, you know what? Maybe we'll just get, we'll, we'll just do it here with this. So the first necklace that I made, my first beaded link necklace in this project was one where I used the Coffee Time Sam Speed Box that was curated by Danielle Wicks. And I made this focal using one of the tassels that came on a gem strand that Sam does. Then we used these um, check glass coffee bean beads. I did some stringing and then I did a beaded chain section here using these check glass hearts and some wire to make a lariat style necklace. This is the first one that I made. And then the second one that I made and I was going to space these out too until I saw this tutorial for this cherry, wire wrapped cherries. Um, and I did a link for that in the video for it. Um, the link is to a tutorial by Exana um, at Exana Crafts. And so if you want to make a uh, wire wrapped cherry focal like this, uh, you'd want to follow her tutorial. I did not make this during my necklace make during my video because there's already a tutorial for it. Um, but I did grab some of these beads from the fall leaves or autumn leaves um, bargain bead box. No, it wasn't bargain bead box. It was curated bead box. And it was great because we had these cherry colored beads and some of these like apple colored beads. So it could be kind of a fall harvest fruit sort of thing. And that was the first week. The second week, I used the Safari kit from Soft Flex. I used some of these special beads that came with it, some um, mahogany obsidian, and these ceramic beads that had come in a mystery ceramic bead pack that I thought went perfectly with the rest of the beads in the Safari kit. And this was the third project that I made. And then the fourth project that I made was one that's pretty special to my heart because I used beads that had come from my aunt. Um, one of the things she liked to do was take apart jewelry and turn it into something else. So in amongst her beading things, there was a little Ziploc baggie with all of these like check glass, purple check glass beads in it um, that had obviously been strung on like some cotton thread and it had... Uh, fallen apart and needed to be either restrung or turned into something else. So I grabbed some of this rose gold wire and I turned these beads into something else. Um, and it gave me a chance to play around with this type of link where you've got a smaller link on one side and a larger link on the other. And it becomes more of a, a design focus on it. And I really love making these. I'm probably going to be doing more of this style later. So that was week number two. And then week number three, I went for some alternative types of beaded links. I used some seed beads and some fire polish beads and some bead th beading thread. And I made bead woven links and then attached them with jump rings to some chain. And I made this using some seed beads and some fire polish beads and some check glass beads. And this was an alternative to using just wire to make beaded links. You can use an alternative method and use, uh, it's really lightweight and really pretty. I like that a lot. And then the other alternative one that I made that week was links using beading wire. 
and I use the Softflex medium beading wire in order to make these links and their crimp tubes with the magical crimper so that I wouldn't have to use crimp covers or anything like that. But this is another very lightweight necklace and it is, honestly, it's a lot of fun to wear. It is super cute. It hangs really well and uh, I love it. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things that I made during this challenge. I mean, it's hard to pick a favorite. I love so many of these, but like this is, this is definitely up there. Um, and that was an alternative to using the, uh, the craft wire to make my links. And then the fourth week, I made these stacking rocks links with the most recent bargain bead box and some closed jump rings that are a little bit larger, some larger hoops. For this necklace and the fancy jasper and some of these purple beads just to give it a little extra color. It seems very hiking out on the trail, collecting river rocks kind of a, a necklace. And then I also revisited a past bead box. Um, that was one of my goals in doing this was to pull out a bead box that I hadn't made anything with. And I had sorted through this one. It was the, um, I guess, Modern Farmhouse uh, bargain bead box. It had a lot of monotone colors. It had these, uh, this, uh, what is it called? Um, Gunmetal colorway uh, for a lot of the findings and like these filigree links. And so I made some beaded links with the beads that were in those boxes, some of the findings that were in that box, and I connected them all together to make this beaded chain necklace. It's a very has a lot of presence. That's what that's the word I'm looking for. It's like we have some very delicate necklaces and then we have some kind of heavier look at me kind of necklaces. And then, uh, so that was the first week, second week, third week, this was the fourth week. And so this week I went ahead and went back to the Mountain Majesty Bargain Bead Box because I wanted to be able to use some of this paperclip chain in a necklace. And I did another lariat style necklace where I made some beaded links with the ceramic beads that were in that box, the lava beads in that rock box. And then we used the paper chip clip, paper clip chain and did some clusters of drops for some of these beads in order to have some dangles from each end of our lariat necklace. And we used this carabiner there in the center of it. So this was the, I think this was the ninth the ninth one that I did. Because that was this week. And the final, final project. The final project. Do -do -do -do, was the one that we made today. And that is the one that I used these hammered washer, copper washers that I hammered into links. And some... These were just in my stash. These were from the uh, Howdy 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 Magical Mystery Bead Box. And these were also in my stash and I don't remember where I got any of them from. So that we could have another great big look at me necklace. It's very statementy, like the other one pan out so you get a better look at all of them together. So that is all of the beaded chain necklaces that I made for the beaded chain challenge for 2023. Um, I just, I just made it up. It's just a thing that I just started doing. So like it's, it doesn't have like a 
been doing it for 10 years sort of thing, but I'm probably going to do it next month or next year if you guys want to join me because I had so much fun doing this and I think it would be a great way to challenge myself next year too. Um, if you... Uh, if you want to go ahead and check out uh, Metal Scrapping Chick, she's probably done a uh, a wrap up video. Um, maybe not today. Maybe it will be tomorrow. But go go check it back back on it. I haven't been looking at YouTube today, so I, I wouldn't know <laughs> what's out there. But uh, but yeah, I do have my playlist. I'm gonna add all of these or all these videos are already on there. So if you want to go back and watch any of these necklaces being made. They're all right there. I'm going to add this one today's to it. And we have wrapped this up and I am really happy and pleased with like the direction that I went with it. Um, just how much creativity I was able to use, um, how much fun I had with it. And I love all of my necklaces. I mean, I got some of my favorites, but <laughs> I do love all of these. Um, let me know which one was your favorite. Let me know if you made any necklaces with me. Um, and tell me what you might be planning for next month because it's going to be October next tomorrow. Tomorrow is October. Um, so I'm probably going to be doing some Halloween theme because I love Halloween jewelry. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of Halloween themed things. Um, I might spice things up with some stringing projects <laughs> just, just, to, just to make it exciting. Um, but I'm probably also going to do some more beaded chain necklaces because I just have so much fun doing it. And, um, it is such a great way, um, to stretch out like your special beads and make them pop and make them special instead of just having them all clumped together. So I really appreciate you guys joining me on this. We're going to have a great week next week, next Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. I hope it's Tuesday. Um, I'm going to be doing the drawing for my 1,000 subscribers uh, giveaway. If you haven't entered, go and head over to that video and leave me a comment, any comment. It doesn't matter. Um, also, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your patience with scammers and spammers in that um, video. Um, it looks like they have slowed down and they aren't doing it as much as they were, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, so we'll do that. And probably tomorrow at some point, I'm going to get my son, who is used to streaming things, to help me. And we're going to get the technical stuff all worked out and probably have a test live stream. I don't know what time it will be. I'm just going to jump on. So if you're on when, when I'm there, come, come hang out with me. Um, if you're not... We'll make sure that it gets posted so you can see all of our all of our woes <laughs> while we try and work that out. But I'm so happy with this project. I'm happy with the way it worked out, and I'm so happy with this little this little guy. That's that that turned out a lot better than I thought. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.